And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. Act three, Bunny! Act three! Act three! Yes, Bunny, my friend, it is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film podcast to moonwalk our way into the third and final act of the show, and it is said third act wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing our low-fat, low-sugar, but high-end glass shards movie of the week! And this week we head to the woods with one of my favorite movies of the year, the 2021 horror supernatural comedy crime whodunit werewolf movie werewolves within yes i love this movie it's weird that there's a werewolf movie out there that's also sweet and funny that and adorable yeah. never thought i'd see an adorable werewolf movie but here we are uh i love the movie and the cast and the script and and I I just I find this film adorable, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mal and I saw it together, and yeah, I I was really tired and wanted to go to bed, but I had to be there because Mal had a lot of questions about like, wait, which one's the oil guy? So, wait, which white guy got shot? So I had to be there to help them with that. Yeah, I I don't know anybody's names. <laughs> you know, I've watched it twice. I enjoy it. Uh, I'm not in love with it. I think yeah. it could have been a little better. You know? I think it's pretty damn good for being a movie based on a video game, because those are all shit. Really? Really? Yeah. Oh. That's why there's an Ubisoft logo in the beginning that that throws you for a loop and goes, wait, what? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, this is a movie based on a VR video game. So okay. you gotta you gotta put it in the in the in the right mindset of like your your feelings on this now have to be based on uh, Alone in the Dark, Street Fighter, The Legend of Chun Li, uh, the Super Mario Brothers live action movie with Bob Hoskins. Yeah. Uh, all of those type of movies. So this one is a video game movie, and for a video game movie. As far as movies as video movies based on video games are concerned, this might as well be Shakespeare. Yeah. You know? If you're gonna base this to uh near death Raul Julia as your big bad guy. <laughs> I am Jean Claude Van Damme. I play an American soldier. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, it is me, your American soldier friend. So, I, I really like this movie. Bunny, why don't you hit us with the plot? The plot! Get us the plot. I am not sure I completely caught all <clears throat> of the plots. <laughs> uh... There's a there's a werewolf in a small town. There are the killings, way, things. The like way that. that I ex the way that I explained it to Mal was, uh, there's a bunch of killings that are happening. It's probably a, it's probably that someone is a werewolf, or a bunch of people are werewolves, or there is no werewolf and people are just being killed. Yeah. And, and that's how I put it. And so, like, through a good portion of the movie, Mal was under the, like, there's not a werewolf, is there? Is there a werewolf? I don't think there's a werewolf. So, so that was a, that was a f interesting way to frame it, I thought. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yes, it was. There, there were indications of a possible werewolf, but things that, that that could be explained otherwise as well. Yeah. You know. Uh, the characters, a lot of them still... Like, like for the first part of the movie, I appreciated that they were taking the time to develop the characters in the movie. And I really wish they would have continued that. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I really didn't get to feel much <clears throat> for any of them except the hero couple. Yeah. You know? Yeah. They I liked the adorable. gay couple, and I liked the gay couple, and I liked the, uh, the, the woman with the dog, Chachi. My Chachi! Yeah, did you really, did you really my... like, feel for them? Chachi! Oh, hell no. The only one I felt for is the gay Mexican. Honey, don't call it a Mexican standoff. Just call it a standoff. <laughs> He was the one that I really felt for him and Sam Richardson. Yeah. Yeah. But I like this movie. I think it's sweet. Polygon called it, quote, a cross between the lo the Lost Boys and the live action Scooby Doo film, which is an analogy I don't particularly like, but I, I do say that, that this film has big clue energy. Yeah. Yeah. This film, this film has mad clue vibes. Yeah. I wish I had seen this movie in theaters. It had a very limited run in theaters. And this would have been a fun film to have seen in a theater, but I didn't get to see it in a theater. Well, in a theater with people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this and movie people stars... people is the downside. <laughs> yeah. So it's a small town, and tensions are running high because of uh, this guy wanting to build a pipeline and pay everybody for it. So half of the people want the pipeline, the other half doesn't want the pipeline. And then murders start happening, and it might be a werewolf or it might not be a werewolf. Pretty sure the, 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 like, there's a lot of death that happens in this film, but also I don't think a lot of it's... We I think the majority of it is in no way werewolf related. Pretty yeah, sure the yeah. environmentalist was killed by the pipeline guy. Pretty sure. Yeah. That the yeah. the the pipeline guy killed the environmentalist. And also, yes, the husband of the Chachi woman Sure, the husband got his hand bitten off, but also he was shot in the shoulder. Yeah. So there's a good chance that the werewolf didn't kill that person. But uh, I really love this. I, I love this movie. I just think it's cute. And it's nice to see a werewolf film that is pretty light on the gore. You know? Yeah. Usually werewolf films are like body horror films. The transformation, it, things like yeah, that. Yeah, gross transformations and very gory, all of the deaths and the biting and the eating and the chewing of the tuchus and the... Ugh. But this, this is a... <laughs> this is a horror movie that's kind of cute and sweet and adorable and I like that because you don't see that a lot in freaking werewolf films yeah. uh, okay so also the cast is great the movie stars Sam Richardson as the new ranger he, yeah. he was one half of the short lived Comedy Central show Detroiters and he also stars in some of the most memorable skits from the greatest TV show of all time, the Netflix series I Think You Should Leave with Tim Robinson, which everyone <laughs> likes and no one hates. <laughs> he was the host of Baby of the Year from the first episode of Act One. Really wonderful. 
I, I, I have I, I have a purse and I carry it everywhere. It took a lot of courage to finally be able to just carry a purse with me everywhere. But I've got all these awesome buttons on it, and right here is one I made for the bad boy of the Baby of the Year pageant, Bart Harley Jarvis. So, <laughs> really proud of that. Who will be the Baby of the Year? And then when they announced a second season of I Think You Should Leave with Tim Robinson, I was kind of hoping that Tim Robinson would do a, an SNL-type thing and have reoccurring characters. So the foreign guy from who was doing the car testing in season one could come back and maybe more baby of the year stuff, but it was all new. But there there are tiny shadows of season one in season two. Like the guy who hosted Baby of the Year coming back to in season two to do the little buff boys competition. <laughs> season two. He was also in the Christmas movie, The Day Scrooge Saved Christmas, uh, in season one. Uh, this is the, uh, I think you should leave with Tim Robinson is the greatest show of all time. Uh, Bunny does not like the show, and I want to get mad about it, but I won't. But I would, <laughs> because I don't know if you know this about me, I used to be a real big piece of shit. You know? Oh, <laughs> uh, uh White swim trunks, slicked back hair, sloppy steaks. You would not have liked me back then. But he's the star of Werewolves Within. The movie also stars Milana Vintrub. Uh Most people know her as Lily from all of the AT&T commercials she's done since 2013. I had no idea she was the voice of she was the face of AT and T for that long, but I know her as Tina, the love interest from the underrated TV show Other Space, that also starred Doe Pinder from Deadpool and Joel from freaking Mystery Science Theater. Yes, I loved that show, and I loved her character, who is uh, who has been hired to be in this uh, space mission, and she's obviously in no way qualified. And she only got the position because the captain has a crush on her. Yeah. And I love her in that show. I fell in love with her in that show. Apparently, uh, the actress is was born in Russia, but you never know it. I've never heard of any accent at all no. from her in any of the things that I have seen her in. But I, I have a huge crush on her. I love Malana. I'm a, I'm a, I, I was so happy to see her in this film. I called the end, too, yeah. because if there's one thing that I that is a rule of thumb that I always uh, believe in, it's that if there's a whodunit, the best actor did it. And I always hold on to that fact that the, the best actor always did it. And so when I saw this cast, I'm like, I don't know if any of them did it, but I have a theory. So, so there's that. Uh, I, I, other... I, think I, have a, I think I have a better analogy for this movie. Okay. It is the Twilight Zone episode where the lights go out on the small neighborhood block. It's called Something Something Main Street. And they all start freaking out about it. Yeah, yeah, I love that episode. I love that episode. This had the also... same vibe. Yeah. So, so something's happening, and from there they are deciding what it is, really not based on anything. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm a big fan of the Twilight Zone pinball table. I'm a huge, huge fan of the Twilight Zone pinball table. And there's different references to different episodes of the Twilight Zone in the Twilight Zone pinball game. So when you hit the bumpers, it's the car lights going off in yeah. that episode when all the lights are out. Uh, yeah, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of that pinball table. Yeah. Other uh, 
People in the cast of this week's movie include Michaela Watkins as Trisha. That's the woman who wants to open the craft store and opens a dog and owns a dog named Chachi. She was 37 years old when SNL hired her, and she was the oldest woman ever hired to be on SNL until they hired writer Leslie Jones to be a writer, and she was so funny that they hired her to be a member of the cast at age 47. So she was so, uh, Leslie Jones was in her 50s when she left SNL. Like, good for you, you know? Yeah. I hear so many younger, hip young people to be on SNL. Good for Leslie Jones to be a big, integral part of Saturday Night Live when she's 50 years old. I really liked Michaela Watkins in SNL. She was only on there for two seasons, but I was a really big fan of her. She had a reoccurring character of a uh, you, a young YouTube movie reviewer who had the catchphrase, bitch, please. And Natasha and I quote that one SNL skit over and over again. But she only lasted two seasons, and so I get really excited when I see her in things, and she's in things here and there, and every time I see her, I'm like, oh, bitch, please. Bitch, please is in this. And I get all excited. Okay. So, so, I knew not a single one of these people, but they all pretty much looked like somebody else. Okay. I'm surprised you didn't know anyone else. Sam Richardson from I Think You Should Leave. Lily from AT&T. Ah, I freaking love her. I didn't Um, even know AT&T had a face. (laughs) She was in Other Space. I I I got really obsessed with Other Space. I haven't seen for that a since while. It, I haven't seen that since it first came out. Where did it wind up floating off to? Because it was on Yahoo for Christ's sakes. Yeah, it was on Yahoo, and then it was picked up by uh, uh, that comedy streaming network called like CISO. Not not CISO, but it was like a comedy. Uh, channel and then that channel folded so I don't know where it is now I think it's on Amazon now yeah but Paul Feig was hoping that like the show would get so popular on Amazon that he would be able to still do the show even though it's been years uh, Paul Feig still feels like like believes in the show and wants to do it somewhere else so like I'm happy for that but uh, yeah Sadly, Other Space is just a, a one-season oddity at yeah. this point, which is a shame because that was a great show. It's just no one saw TV on Yahoo streaming. Uh-huh. You know? You didn't know the gay couple either? One of them was Guillermo from the TV show What We Do in the Shadows, which I'm in love, and the other guy was on 30 Rock for a couple of seasons. You yeah, know, I, uh, I, I have not watched 30 Rock. He was also in later seasons of uh, American Horror Story. Like season five or six onward, he's now one of those people who just pops up in every American Horror Story. Okay. I think he was in the Vampire Hotel one with Lady Gaga, but I might be mistaken. But anyway, I love this cast. This cast was great. Okay, the director does not have a Wikipedia page, but I know this guy because this is his second film. His name is Josh Rubin. He did a small-time horror comedy movie. He wrote, produced, directed, and starred in it along with Chris Redd from Saturday Night Live. Uh, whom I'm a big fan of. He was also in Pop Star, Never Stop Not Stopping. But Josh Rubin made his own little horror comedy called Scare Me. Yeah. And it, it premiered on Shudder last year, and I've seen it, and it's really funny. It's a really simple story. There's three writers there in a cabin. The lights go out. They decide to entertain themselves with scary stories. But all the scary stories are kind of stupid, and things start happening in the cabin, 
and it's like a parody of those stuck in a cabin telling horror story movies it's one of those movies and a parody of one of those movies and it's really quite interesting and funny and it mocks the genre and apparently that movie was so successful that he was chosen to do this movie werewolves within which is based on a freaking video game yeah i I didn't know that that might have helped i didn't know that either when I first saw it, I didn't know it. And I saw the Ubisoft logo, and I'm like, what the fuck? And so while the opening credits are rolling, I'm on Wikipedia, and I'm like, this is a fucking video game? But when you know that this is a video game movie, and it's like, okay, well, I mean, it's uh, it's better than anything Yui Bowl has ever done. Yes. The bar for video game movies is extremely low. True. So as long as it's better than Mortal Kombat Annihilation, it's an A. Yeah, no, it was it was entertaining, but but like I did not really feel much connection to any of the characters. I don't I don't feel like that they were really like fleshed out enough. But, you know, I guess if you're making a video game movie, they're fleshed out enough for a video game movie. Yeah. You know, and, and like, anything I could could say about what maybe should have happened might be breaking some video game lore, I don't know. Well, the (laughs) video game is completely different than this movie. First off, the video game is a VR game. So yeah. already it's a weird game. But it, it came out for the the PC and for the PlayStation 4. It was released in December 2016. And it's a real simple game. And um, the setting is like a medieval fantasy castle setting. And there are some people, and one of them is a werewolf. And so most of the game is you and other VR players sitting around a campfire outside at night trying to argue over which one is the werewolf. And then that round ends, and someone dies, and then you come back to the campfire and try and figure it out until either one person is discovered to be the werewolf and everyone else dies. Basically, it was like a virtual reality medieval Among Us. Yes. Way before Among Us was popular. But I'm happy that the movie took the basic premise and ran with it and didn't do any of the others. So, like, this is a movie based on a video game, but also so little of the video game like this this movie basically just takes the general premise of the game and just sort of runs with it so yeah I'm glad they didn't set the movie in medieval freaking times it would have sucked they found an interesting way to do a very different video game as a movie yeah yeah and they filmed. They started filming it in February of 2020, and thankfully wrapped it right when the fucking pandemic was hitting. So, <laughs> so that's good. Not really any uh, chance for them to uh, do reshoots for that one. Yeah. So uh, you're stuck with the footage that you have. But I, I like this movie, and I think it's cute, which is weird because it's a horror werewolf film. But I'm not down it on the movie, am I? Uh, I'm saying it I feels like you it. are. Huh? It feels like you are a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. A little I'm bit. I'm just saying I would have liked to have seen more character development. Ooh. I, I, I feel that the characters got a lot of character development when you think of this as a horror film. Yeah, like like I said, I, like the whole beginning I, I was kind of praising the movie because it was spending time on the characters. 
Yeah. But it was mostly a, a walkthrough, and there wasn't a whole hell of a lot there past yeah. that. You know? Yeah. Like, you met the characters in the walkthrough, and the characters yeah. did not... There was no further development, really, and there was also no real bonding between characters. The 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 big reveal speech at the end about, uh, oh yes, I'm a werewolf. I've been killing all of these people, and and and, and the character. I'm trying not to do full on spoilers. Yeah. For this one, because I like the reveal. But but the person says, yes, I was just faking it. I don't like you. I don't like you at all. But then during the speech, the character does say, I've been trying to turn you. Okay. At one point during the speech, which leads me to doubt what they're saying, because they're saying, ah, I was just pretending to be friendly with you. I don't like you. I don't like you at all. I've been trying to turn you into a werewolf this entire time. And it's like, well, if you don't fucking like him and are talking about how much you've been faking it and you hate him, why have you been trying to turn him into a freaking werewolf? Yeah. But, but yeah, I like the movie. I like it a lot. I've watched it maybe like four or five times. It's just one of those movies where it's like, I'm sitting on the couch. I finally have some time on the TV. I'm going to put on a movie. Maybe I'll watch a horror movie. Ah, but the kids are still awake. So I need something. Ah, Werewolves Within is something that I can put on. And it's scary, but there's nothing too scary about it. There's nothing too horrific about it. Yeah. You don't see a lot. And that's what I like about it as a parent. That I can watch this, and if a kid comes in, it's like, okay, it, we should be good. Yeah. Yeah. But that's all I have for this movie. I loved it. And I think it's the freaking best. And Bunny said that he 100% hates it. <laughs> and how dare you, you son of a bitch. It's I think you should leave all over again. But uh Bunny No, it had it had funny bits, it had interesting characters. I just would have liked to have seen more out of them. Uh you know, it had an interesting story, yes. It was fun. And when you grade it in terms of other video game movies, this is uh a million Shakespeare plays. Uh, that could very well be true. What what else would be... I mean, if we're judging it up anything against you, you we bowl, okay, you totally win there. Oh, yeah. I'm not yeah, sure you what other... Uh, shit ton. Video game movies. Street Fighter, and then Street Fighter The Legend of Chun-Li, Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat Annihilation, Mortal Kombat again, the Super Mario Brothers live-action movie. I don't know if I've seen any of those. You've never seen Mortal Kombat Annihilations? One of the worst movies of all time? Yeah. Oh, Is that, that the one with Christopher Lambert? No, he was in the first one. He didn't. He refused to come back for the second one. The second one is horrible. The first one is, is dumb fun in a malignant sort of way. But the second one is just... It's one of the worst movies of all time. It is the worst. Yeah. It's so bad. So as far as uh, uh, video game movies go, th this is like the the, the tippy top. Uh, I think. Well, so I'm so totally that, willing to grant that, sure. Yeah. So that's it for me and this film. I don't know what we're doing next week because next week and throughout all of October... Bunny is in charge of picking the movies because it's his birthday coming up and he's in charge. And so I do not know what we're going to be doing next week. Bunny, why don't you enlighten us and tell us what film we will be doing next week. Next week, 
We are going someplace we have never gone before. We are going to what I would I would assume is both of our least favorite genres since have movies we not though? really done any movies in this genre we barely even talk about this genre it doesn't come up in conversation even in a casual way we're going west the fuck so a, a month of westerns for westerns hand picked westerns In the Are we gonna be watching are we gonna be watching any old episodes of Bounty Law? That's my favorite. favorite. Who starred in that? Oh yeah, Rick Dalton. You remember him? We could probably sneak it in. He was in all those Italian movies. (laughs) I I think this is going to be a fair representation. Of westerns in our own particular bon vivant. Okay. I'm going to try and keep a positive attitude about this. Okay. Well, then you might want to brace yourself a bit. What are, what are we doing next week? Oh, no. We are going to be doing El Topo. El Topo. Fun fact. Alejandro Jodorowsky's Western Masterpiece. Fun fact about El Topo. It's Spanish for The Topo. (laughs) The Topo. (laughs) (laughs) That's about all I know. Hooray. So if you get yourself in in the right frame of mind... You've had Jodorowsky experience before. Yes. You got a good idea what's coming. Okay? Okay. So you know what to prepare for. But this is a good fucking movie. Is there going to be a scene where Jesus wakes up in a warehouse full of Jesuses made out of potatoes? No, exactly. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> All, right. All right, so next week we're watching El Topo, which is Spanish for the Topo. And so, it is uh, already on the drive. Sweet. All right, so that's next week. Next week we're going to be watching El Topo classing this bitch up. Yes. This is what we're going to be doing next week. We're also, uh, of course, uh, Steve Stubbs, uh, Steve's Historic Approximations, Bunny Verses. Uh, he might be talking some more about professional wrestling uh, because everything is happening right now Uh, but that's next week now that I look back at this week oh Lily from AT&T the Cleveland Racists the twist of Malignant and let's not forget the importance of medicine cabinets I I gotta say I think this has been a pretty uh a, a, a fairly a somewhat a pretty good episode of the podcast I think this has been a damn good episode okay good I felt the same way but I I feel like you're the one who makes that distinction and not me and you know I don't want to step on any toes you know but yeah. yes I I concur with your assessment good sir yes So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve, and on behalf of Natasha and Amber and Eleanor and Maxwell and Mal and everybody else, I just want to say thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens! I almost ate moldy bread. Um... And you do swallows and loopies. And you werewolves it with sin. Nice. Way to tie it all together, Maxwell. Was, was he an elf? Yeah. Yeah, he, he was an elf ranger apprentice. Oh. 
do 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 do